What is all this fuss about the Brexit? I'm Doug Levy, and I thought I'd share some thoughts with you. And my thoughts on why Americans should care a lot more about what people in the United Kingdom are deciding for themselves. Apparently, a whole lot of people in the U.S. didn't realize what a global economy actually means until they looked at their 401k balances dropping today. How did yours do? My savings is invested pretty conservatively, and I'm about 5% less comfortable right now than I was this time yesterday. No matter what happens, we know that things are going to be highly variable for a while, almost certainly into next spring, and there's not a lot we can do to predict what's going to happen comfortably, and that's a problem. The U.S. economy always slows down a bit leading into a presidential election. Investors wait on the sidelines to see whose policies are more likely to be in place. But we don't usually have as dramatic a difference as we have right now. And particularly with Trump backing the idea of independence from the global economy, he was a booster of the Brexit, um, we have a very big difference between the two candidates. Trump was crowing about how wonderful the Brexit vote was and that the U.S. should do the same thing in November, even though that's not even comparable. Uh, there's completely no logic to that statement, even if the sentiment may be true. And sadly, I saw one of my neighbors here in New York echoing exactly this absurdity in New York, and he actually took it a step further and said the United States should withdraw from the United Nations. Of course, the United Nations has absolutely nothing to do with global economic policy and currency, which is really what this is about. But why let the facts get in the way? Now, think about it. Withdrawing from the global economy would only work if you really go off the grid, and I mean off the grid. You wouldn't be able to use electricity, the telephone, the internet. Our smartphones are made in China, but they're built using technology developed in the United States and dozens of other countries. We fly in airplanes that are made by a French-led international consortium. Our astronauts conduct their research on the space station that was built by a U.S.-led coalition of, I think, 110 countries, and it's supplied by Russian rockets. Even our cars are built with parts and technology from multiple countries. And most of us enjoy those products that result from that international collaboration. So unless you're really, really withdrawing from all of that, there's no way to isolate yourself from the economic structures of other countries. Now, is the European Union working for everybody? Probably not. Nothing works for everybody. But the coordination of financial policies across Europe has simplified spending and investment. So if you're a United States company who's trying to sell to people in Europe, think about it. It used to be that you would have to follow a different set of rules for each country. France, Germany, Italy, Great Britain. The European Union streamlined all of that so that you had universal economic policies. Um, that's particularly true in the pharmaceutical business, where instead of having to go through drug approval in each separate country, by harmonizing the regulations, it simplified the process. So a whole lot more research was able to be done, because instead of spending money on the administrative hurdles to sell a product, Pharmaceutical companies have been able to invest in more research and sell more pharmaceuticals to help people hopefully live healthier. Now, that's not a commentary on the pharmaceutical industry, but it's just a good example of a highly regulated industry that benefits significantly when countries cooperate with each other on economic policy. So that coordination of economic policies has simplified spending and investment across national boundaries. It's created employment opportunities for millions of people, and it helps U.S. businesses do business there, which means jobs for people in the United States, too. Perhaps the most disturbing part of the news today, though, was not even the actual financial consequences, but the data that shows that more people in Great Britain searched the Internet to find out what the European Union actually is today, the day after the election, meaning people let the vote happen and then tried to figure out what the vote was about. 
People woke up to the news today that the country voted to back out of the EU and only then started paying attention. We need to make sure we don't make that same mistake here in the United States. People die to protect our freedom to govern ourselves and to vote. Let's honor those heroes by learning about the issues in advance of the election and voting wisely in November and every election. Let me know what you think. I'm happy to try to answer your questions. Send them to me or put them in the comments field and I'll do the best I can. Thanks. Have a great weekend.